<laughs> you know, it's funny. Football season is officially back. You know, you got the odds makers coming out and they got the New York Jets identified as potentially a Super Bowl contender, um, definitively a playoff contender. But you've got a group of people who just for some reason or the other refuse to see it, right? They're going about how it's the same old Jets. Aaron Rodgers is washed. You know, he had his worst season ever before he became a New York Jet. Then, of course, he got the injury. He's 40 years old. It's the same old Jets. Like, the, LOL, they're not making the playoffs. LOL, they're not winning the Super Bowl. It's just laughable. The funny thing is, there's an exact NFL blueprint for what the New York Jets have done with acquiring Aaron Rodgers. And if we're going to be honest, it's a proven uh, blueprint as well. <laughs> so we're going to talk about it. I can do it all. I will never fall if they're in this house. You know that I got the mother, mother sauce, man. You know I'm the boss. I know what it costs. I knew what I lost. I'm so worth to tell you I'm a renaissance, man. I can do it all. I will never fall if they're in this house. You know that I got the mother, mother sauce, man. You know I'm the boss. I know what it costs. I knew what I lost. I'm so worth to tell you I'm a renaissance, man. Congratulations, brother. And here we. You know, it's funny because a lot of individuals want to sit there and, and they talk about the acquisition of Aaron Rodgers and they think that the Joe Douglas and Coach Sala potentially brought in Aaron Rodgers to, you know, break the playoff drought, right? They're going to go ahead and get to the playoffs, break the drought. Maybe they'll win a game and then they'll freaking move on. But the fact of the matter is we've seen this team actually win seven games in back-to-back -back seasons when they had to deal with the worst offensive production in all of sports. Like the quarterback position being the most important position in all of sports, the Jets got it wrong. People will sit there and be like, oh, well, they picked the court. Listen, a lot of teams get the quarterback position wrong consistently. It's the hardest position in all of sports to figure out. One thing we can say is they've done really, really well undrafting on defense we're seeing that right now in terms of uh the, the kind of undrafted free agents we've brought in we just gave a uh, um michael clemens a second the bag for being the best slot corner in all of football um sauce gardner garrett wilson are in my opinion elite we're going to see garrett wilson take that next step this season Brees hall is in my opinion the best running back in football i know you're going to say christian mccaffrey because of what you saw on some stat lines but when you look at it in terms of context Brees Hall has accomplished significantly more than Christian McCaffrey with a lot less help. So in my opinion, in terms of singular running backs, right, he is the best running back in football. I think this season he gets to showcase that. But I go back to the point of saying you don't bring in Aaron Rodgers because, you know, you're trying to get to the playoffs or you want to win a playoff game. Aaron Rodgers is the last of a dying breed of quarterback. They're called the field generals. There are one a ton of them. Field generals were the kind of quarterbacks that could not only beat you with their arm and their ability to play the position of quarterback, but also mentally with their IQ. High IQ individuals that were tacticians when they were on the field. Your Philip Rivers of the world. You know, Dan Marino, I would call it a, a field general. You've got your Drew Breeses of the world, I would think was, I would say was a field general as well. Your Peyton Mannings, your Tom Brady's, and the last of that dying breed is your Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has a high IQ for the game. Aaron Rodgers has an elite arm. You bring in a guy like Aaron Rodgers because you believe that you're a couple pieces away to get into the Super Bowl. Now, again, you're laughing, right? It's the New York Jets. Ha, ha, ha. What are you guys talking about? But the fact of the matter is this blueprint is already proven. We've already seen this done before in the NFL. It's a proven blueprint. Peyton Manning. Some of y'all might not know this. But Peyton Manning, his last year in the, with the Indianapolis Colts, was dealing with potentially, you know, the end of his career being washed, right? Dealing with a significant injury to his neck. You kind of saw a lot of the zip and power to his arm was pretty much gone. Um, he didn't have the same uh, ability to go ahead and get the ball downfield the way we had seen him do it recently. In fact, in his last year with the Colts, Peyton Manning had, some would say, his worst season as a Colt, right? I think he averaged... Almost a whole two yards uh, lower uh, on each throw he made. I think he went from an average of like 8.0 yards to like 6.2, 6.9. I'd have to look into it again. But it's one of his lowest totals in terms of per uh, average per throw. 
of his career from like, I think his rookie season down to his last year with the Colts. It was like one of the worst. He started to go ahead and decline as they say, right? He goes to Denver. Not only does he wind up winning a Super Bowl with Denver, he also sees increases in his production. I think if I'm not mistaken, he threw for the most yards ever in his career when he went to Denver. 5,000 plus yards. He's, I think it was the first time he's ever thrown for 5,000 plus yards. 5,400 something yards. Uh, I think it's like the 55 touchdown season that he had. His best season came after he left the Colts on the back end of his career. And by the way, he also won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. Peyton Manning did it older, injured on the decline, right? Elevated his career. Why did he do that? Denver Broncos had an elite defense. Denver Broncos had offensive weapons to assist him in doing such. I mean, they had a unit. They had a group. And I think when you take into consideration that he went to a roster that was already built, that was ready to go, he just had to go ahead and add his presence to it, that field general mentality. He was able to go ahead and literally not only have an incredible season, like career highs in his in, uh, career highs season, he also won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos on the back end of his career. That's example number one. Example number two for this blueprint, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, listen, um, I, I hate the man. I hate Tom Brady. I think as, as a Jets fan, you can't help but hate the dude. But this is the greatest quarterback of all time. I really believe that. I believe the Patriots, the Patriots dynasty never happens without Tom Brady. I do believe Tom Brady had way more to do with it than Bill Belichick. I'll, I'll die on that hill all day. I think it's proven. Bill Belichick without him has been less than mid. Bill Belichick's coaching tree has been less than mid. Those guys who got head coaching jobs off of the back of the, the Patriot way, it was proven wherever they went that the leadership style or coaching style of Bill Belichick does not work. Uh, it was the Tom Brady effect. So I digress. Nevertheless, Tom Brady, I think the year is 2019, has one of his worst statistical seasons as a Patriot. Um, I think he had like 24 touchdowns, uh, a 6.6 .6 yards per average. And people were saying he's on the decline, one of his lowest QBRs of his career. And and the, the people were chirping. He's on the decline. Like, this is it, right? I think he just had slightly over 4,000 yards. Um, so he goes to Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers. A team that had an elite defense. A team that had wide receivers like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. They had Leonard Fournette. They, of course, brought, you know, uh, Robbie, Rob Gronkowski out of retirement as well. But pieces were already in play. It was a great team. That same core of a team, Tom Brady took to the Super Bowl. Oh, and mind you, had his best season ever. I mean, I, I, I don't know for sure if he had a better season with... The Buccaneers or the year he had Randy Moss, I, I want to say he had more yards with the Bucks, but more touchdowns with Randy Moss. I'd have to go back and take a look. But nevertheless, a guy who was on the decline, right, goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, has a career year, whether it was the, touch, the touchdowns or whether it was the freaking the yards. One of those is true. Career year. Oh, and by the way takes his team to the Super Bowl and wins it. Fast forward to now, you've got Aaron Rodgers. Again, those two individuals identified are, to me, the last of the field generals. Those, those two individuals identified, this is the blueprint you've seen over the last 21st century come to fruition. That has happened in recent NFL memory, NFL history. That is a proven, proven blueprint to get to the Super Bowl. You got all the pieces, you got the elite defense, you got the, the elite special teams, you got young up and coming playmakers on the roster, the quarterback position is where you're lacking. You know what? You bring in a field general, boom, you fly. Those field generals get those the, the offense on focus. They fly. They get to the Super Bowl, they win the Super Bowl. The blueprint is already proven. Aaron Rodgers is now a New York Jet after being a Green Bay Packer for all of his life. He's a New York Jet now. Granted, we're talking about a guy who's coming off an Achilles injury. Okay, well, 
Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl when his neck was about to fall off of his head. Then you're going to say, well, oh my God, he's 40 years old. Okay, well, Tom Brady was 43 years old when he was playing for the freaking Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like, I think Aaron Rodgers is a more talented thrower of the football than both Tom Brady and freaking Peyton Manning. I'm not going to sit there and tell you the IQ is higher. I think that when it comes down to it, I've never seen a more clutch quarterback in my entire life than Tom Brady. And I've never seen a higher IQ quarterback in all of my life than freaking Peyton Manning. But I think Aaron Rodgers is literally amongst that tier because he's got the best arm of both of those uh, quarterbacks. I've never seen a better throw of the football in all of my life like Aaron Rodgers. So he, his superpower is still his superpower. But he is definitively one of the last field generals. That era is dying. He might be the last one. Some would say Patrick Mahomes. I don't know if I really look at Patrick Mahomes as, as a field general. He's more of an improviser, elite talent. He's fun to watch. But in terms of like dissecting defenses, I don't see him doing that a lot. He's more of a guy who gets outside of the pocket, finds an open guy. He makes playing backyard football look really, really fun and easy. We'll call it that. A field general is a, is a precision, a tactician. They're already identified where they're going with the ball pre-snap. I think Peyton Manning done that, has done that at an elite level. Tom Brady at an elite level. And we've seen Aaron Rodgers at an elite level. And I think we're going to get that version of Aaron Rodgers. Everybody who's laughing about it, who thinks it's impossible, well, we've already seen it done. Tom Brady has done it. Peyton Manning has done it. And, he, and Aaron Rodgers is going to do it for the New York Jets. The blueprint is written, man. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to come out here this season specifically. He's had He has the best defense he's ever had with him. Aaron Rodgers has a ridiculous 35-2 and two record over the last decade uh, whenever his team kept the opposing opponent at under 20 points. 20 points or lower, 35-2. and two. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to surprise a lot of individuals, and personally, I am ecstatic. Um, I think that in this situation... When you look at what it boils down to is people can laugh all they want to. Haters can hate. It, it is what it is. But ultimately, ultimately, Aaron Rodgers is a field general. The dude is still a great quarterback. His down season two years ago is some quarterbacks in the league's best season. And we're talking about a guy who, who had top 10 numbers. Collectively, stats-wise, top 10 numbers was a bad season for him. Well, per the NFL. But for him, that was a bad season. Top 10 quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is going to surprise some people this season. He really is. And again, if you, if you don't believe me, that's fine. Just look at the history. We've already got two proven blueprints of this exact formula working in the modern NFL. I guess only time will tell. <laughs> Go Jets.